Hello and welcome to the Mindset and Self Mastery Show. I'm your host, Nick McGowan, and on this show, my guest and I unpack the stories that shape us and the lives we lead on our path to self mastery. Today on the show, we have Matt Cavanaugh. Matt's the CEO of a service based company called Helped. That's H E L P T. And its goal is to be the Amazon of services, and he's doing it all while managing a full course load in college. He credits the pandemic as the catalyst for he and a buddy creating the company and shares the ups and downs of starting the company during a global pandemic and how to best manage your mindset through tough situations like that. So let's not wait any longer. Let the games begin. Hey, Matt, welcome to the show. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Thank you very much for having me on. Um, I've watched a lot of your podcasts in the past and, um, you know, it's, uh, I'm glad you reached out to me via LinkedIn. I appreciate that, man. I think it was actually you who reached out to me about the uh, the show. Either way, you know, I'm constantly on LinkedIn. It seems like you might be one of those people. I think that's a good way to be able to connect with people that are uh, not only doing podcasts, but people like yourself that are starting companies. So, Matt, why don't we start here? Why don't you tell us one thing you do for a living and um, maybe one thing that most people don't know about you? Yeah. So currently... I'm in college. I'm a college student at the University at Buffalo. Um, I have an app, which is a marketplace where freelancers can connect with people who need jobs and services completed. Uh, So to explain a little bit more, we have 15 different services that we offer, everything from landscaping to tutoring uh, to electricians to plumbers you can find on the app. Uh, So I've been working on that for a little over two years. And, you know, we just launched um, the day before Thanksgiving. So We've been out for a very short period of time. We're in our beta phase with that. And then on the side to actually, because that's a startup, to actually earn income, um, I'm a waiter at a restaurant in Buffalo as well. And yeah, I mean, I just tore my MCL and my knee skiing. So I guess that could be, you know, the answer to, uh, you know, something not a lot of people know about me. I haven't really told that many people just because. I don't know exactly if it's an MCL and an ACL or exactly how I'm going to be out. So I've just been kind of just playing it by ear. Um, actually, I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow for that. But but yeah, um, che- Cheesecake Factory is where I'm a waiter. Uh, you know, great tips there when, when you're able to walk around. And then the Help app, um, that's my startup company. That's my dream. That's my vision is to, to really grow that. So we we were talking before we actually hit record that everybody at some point has to work at a restaurant. You've got to be front of house because if you don't know how to handle people, that'll teach you. That'll teach you how to work with those conversations where people are yelling at you about shit. And you're like, but I, I can't make your food for you. Like I can only give you the food or get your drinks. Stop yelling at me. But now you're going to be stuck in the back just rolling everybody's silverware. So I'm, I'm sure all those uh, waiters, waitresses will appreciate like just give Matt all the silverware. Let him do it. He'll stay there. Um. Uh, and I, I've never actually busted my MCL or ACL. I've had a couple friends that have done that. But how are you managing right now, knowing that you're probably looking at six to eight weeks of a boot and wander around and trying to build your business and make money? How's your mind doing? Yeah. So, I mean, when it first happened, um, you know, I was, I was upset, obviously, just because I need money to go into my company. And then we're actually saving up to go to Silicon Valley this summer um, for our app. So obviously Silicon Valley, that's a very high cost of living, especially when you, you know come from Buffalo, where we're at right now, where the cost of living is lower. And I mean, r- as soon as I tore it, like, I knew it was torn right away. Um, I, I was actually, and as soon as I went down in, right away, I was thinking, I was like Silicon Valley this summer, like, I'm not going to be able to do it. Like. The only way I thought I was going to be able to get there was if I waited tables, made enough money doing that, which which is really good money, um, would be the only way. Like a normal minimum wage job would be very difficult to to have and then be able to save up enough money to go to Silicon Valley this summer. Um, So, you know, when I sat down, I kind of realized, well, you know, I I don't know exactly what it is yet. The doctor does know it's an MCL. If it's just the MCL, you know, you don't always need to get surgery. It, it may not be that bad of an injury. If it's an ACL too, 
that's a lot worse than injury. You know, you got to get the surgery. You're out for, you know, six plus weeks, um, whatever it is exactly. So, you know, I don't know exactly what it is yet. Um, like I said, tomorrow I find out and, you know, we'll go from there. But I am rolling silverware in the back of the restaurant. Um, am taking business calls from the back, uh, talking to the other lady, Audra, who works next to me. And, you know, we're making the best of the situation. And that's really all you can do, right? Um, I, and I don't think it'll stop me from going this summer. I still plan on going and figuring it out one way or another. Um, you know, so there's nothing, you know, part of, part of the show, honestly, and how this ties in mindset, you know, you're going to have adversities. I, I've had a lot of adversities with just starting the company alone, more adversity this past two years with the company that I've ever had in my entire life. And, you know, you just have to overcome those, those things and literally just fight through them. Um, and you know, that's, that's how you have a successful life. I think there's adversity and then there's being a Buffalo Bills fan and having to deal with all of that. At least you guys are starting to look good now. And look, I'm originally from Philly, so I bleed green. And when I think of MCL and ACLs, I think of Carson Wentz going down and how that changed everything for him. And I wish I could say a better situation, but I don't think he's going to be on the Colts next year. Um, but the fact that you've been through some craziness over the past two years isn't unlike most people, but it sounds like your craziness is a bit different where some people have gone through health issues and COVID type stuff. Let's kind of recoil a little bit though and take a step back. How did you actually get to the point that you wanted to start the company? Do you have entrepreneurs in your family? Like, was this just an idea that came up because you were like, look, I'm trying to help my neighbors and like, give us a little bit of background. Yeah. So my partner and I originally came up with the idea when we were door dashing, pandemic hits, and really all the stars aligned for this company to be built. Like, if COVID never happened, this company probably wouldn't exist. Um, <clears throat> if I couldn't have gotten the DoorDash app on my phone for some reason, it wouldn't let me sign up as a DoorDasher. I have no idea why. It just wouldn't let me do it. So I was like, I got with my buddy, I was like, we need to door dash. Like, I want kind of want to door dash. Like, I know you have the app. Like, I'll drive my car. He didn't have a car, right? So, like, all these stars are aligning for us to be door dashing together. I mean, I'm, I'm great buddies with the guy, but it was awful money because we split everything. So, like, like, what were we really making? Like, there's no way you make more than $20 an hour door dashing. And let's say you made $22 an hour. We're splitting that. So, it's 11 a piece. You know what I mean? And then I'm paying for the gas. So, I mean, it really made no sense for me to be doing it. But COVID just hit. We were, like, kind of bored, honestly. We were like, you know, we'll go mess around on DoorDash, um, try to make some money. And we were doing it. We were like, wow, you know, this kind of, like, the first day was fun. Then the second day we did in a row, we were kind of like, all right, this kind of sucks in the matter of, like, you're just doing the same thing the entire time. Um, it doesn't pay, like really all that good. You know, it's, it's damn near minimum wage, what you're making on DoorDash. Um, and we were like, I wish there was a way that like we could use our talents, you know? And we were like, all right, what talents do we have? So, you know, I played hockey and he played lacrosse. And like, this was at the time as well. So this is my freshman year of college and he did a postgraduate year. So he was going to be a freshman and we were like, you know, hockey and lacrosse, can we teach these sports through like an app? Like what if there was an app where we could go to like a middle schooler's house and like train them in like hockey or lacrosse? And like, not like we couldn't find anything like that, first of all. So we thought we had this like original idea. And then we said, why stop at just hockey and lacrosse? We said like, let's just do like, there's way bigger markets, right? Like people need services and, you know, personal trainers, um, anything all the time. So we said, all right, we're going to open it up and be like an Amazon of services. Like that's literally like the term we use, like Amazon of services. And we thought we had this like super original idea. And turns out it wasn't all that original. You know, there are other companies out there that they kind of do what we did, but we kind of saw it as an opportunity. We said, you know, no one's ever heard, like we've never heard of these companies. None of our friends have never used them. They're really not in our area or that prevalent. Um, let's go for it. Like, let's try and actually create this. And I believe at the beginning, 
we were, I mean, we were so like new in the business and like everything. We sat down and we made a list and we spent a long time on this list, like hours on this list. And it was every possible service that you could ever imagine, like to like a handicap bookie, like, or a handicap, like odds maker, like to, to help you with sports betting. Like that was one of the, like, they were so specific like that. Um, consulting of everything under the sun. Like, there was literally thousands of different services. And then, you know, when we were creating the app, we outsourced it originally and we went to the people and they were like, you guys can't do all these, these different things. Like who's like, how are you going to fill like even like 20 of these different services? And we were like, okay, so we scaled it down. Um, and then that's where we came to 15. But but yeah, that that's really where it came from. Just do, literally door dashing. Um, my buddy looked at me and, and you know said, "Like, why don't we use our talents?" You know, I said, "Why isn't it be an app?" And then from that that point forward, you know, we stopped door dashing and we started working on this company and, and trying to really create, you know, something 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 out of it. I'm sure there was also a lot more than just like, oh well, you know, I'm in hockey, you're in lacrosse shit let's make a list of thousands of different things we can do so how did you jump from like well we're gonna teach people the sports that we know to what are the other things and the overall 15 list that you came up with what what's the importance of that yeah so what what really happened was you know how it transitioned from hockey and lacrosse to like the amazon of services we kind of sat down where you said like, okay, like hockey and lacrosse, like those are pretty popular sports in our area. But we said, you know, are people going to want to download a singular app just to do those different things? Like we kind of thought that was too niche. And then we said, you know, people don't need those things every day, so to say. <clears throat> um, so we said like, let's just, let's do different categories. Like we'll have a personal training, but like, why don't we do like like landscapers and, and things of that sort? Because we, we had done, me and him actually did landscaping together over the one summer. I think it was like two summers before that. We did we found this guy on Craigslist, hired us for the whole summer to be landscapers with him. Um, but we kind of thought, you know, we've done a lot of this stuff. Um, I had I had posted on Home Advisor that I could remove popcorn ceilings. So me and him went to this guy's house the one day. And he, I think he gave us like five or six hundred dollars, and we just scraped the popcorn ceilings off of his kitchen. Um, and we were kind of like, "All right, like we can do this sort of stuff. Why don't? Why doesn't the app open up to more categories?" And then that's where the Amazon of services kind of came from. And we didn't realize that, like, oh, like how are we ever going to be able to fill these these different things? It was so early on. Um, and then once they started kind of thinking about creating the app, the, the developers, you know, they obviously came back to us and said, like, first of all, there'd be a ton of work to, like, type all these in here. Uh, second of all, like, you guys, like, the business model wouldn't make sense if you guys did that. And again, we were so early on in the, like, business, like, we really weren't fully thinking things through like we do now. Um, like, like, now, if we want to add something in, you know, there's certain questions that, that have to be checkmarked off, like, everything's way more strategic. Um, you know, there's more systems put into place just because we've been doing it longer, but at the start, a lot of things were just very sporadic. Um, but that was good because that's what was able to get us to kind of actually get moving on the company. Cause one of the things that I really believe is when you're first starting out with anything, you know, your early momentum is key. Because, like, you come up with this idea, and then it's like, all right, like, how fast can you just, like, get moving on it? Um, and then you just want to, like, attack, attack, attack. Because once you lose that early momentum, then you're kind of like, okay, like, this company is dragging on. You know, you, you can get unmotivated. You know, it's happened to me with, like, other ideas I've had in the past. You know, I could have sworn, like, oh, like, this is the next big idea. Go tell my mom. You know, I go and tell her. Like, I even told her about the help that. And she was kind of like, all right, like this is another one of your ideas. We'll actually see if you go out and do something with it. And then got that early momentum, part, partly due to COVID, partly due to us kind of like isolating ourselves away from everything. And we came in 
And we kind of said, you know, we're just going to attack this company. And then it went on from there. Yeah, I think you hit a couple of key things that a lot of people miss out on. As you go through and you figure out ideas of stuff that you want to do, just fucking do something. Just do something. Start moving on something. A lot of people forget that there's such power in the momentum. And they don't even start it because then they think, well, there's all this other stuff. And, you know, what about these things? So on one hand, now that you know what you know, you'll know that going into the next situation. Like, oh, you know what? We should really think about production. <laughs> How are we going to produce this stuff? What are we going to do? How are we going to fulfill this and actually service all of this? And that's something you kind of have to learn. But the fact that you actually took that step and were like, let's just do it. Let's just start moving and start doing things with it. There's a lot of power within just taking those steps. So how was your partner with that and understanding that you guys just need to act upon something and kind of keep that momentum going? Yeah, so he was the one to really instill this like crazy mindset in, into the company. Like He was the first one to like, I don't know where he came up with it. I don't know if he stumbled upon a YouTube video and then all of a sudden, like, he just kind of said, like, this is what we have to do. I think part of it was due to the fact he went away to prep school. And, you know, if he was on here, he would tell you guys all about it. He's actually working right now to earn money so we can, you know, help fund our company. Uh, it just happened to be one of the days he got scheduled. But um, we, he went to, a, like, Loomis Chafee Prep School. And did a postgraduate year there. And I think he was surrounded, you know, it was a prep school, right? You dorm there, it's pretty strict. Um, and that really changed his mindset. And then when we started the company, I think he saw kind of what it would take for this to, to go where we wanted it to go, right? Like, how is this company even going to launch? Like, we can't act or operate or, you know, do things the way we used to do things, right? Um, we almost got to, you know, reinvent ourselves as, as individuals and you know like i keep saying COVID hit and that was the perfect excuse for us to you know tell people we can't go out we you know we're we're working on stuff and then i kind of sat there I, I looked at him and i go clark like any going out any anything that's going on in the world right now is pretty much put to a halt you know we're not missing anything by just spending friday and saturday nights working on this app because there's nothing really going on anyway you know, and, you know, that that was really key because we were able to get ahead on those Friday and Saturday nights by, you know, staying in and working on the company. So now we're working, you know, seven days a week just trying to get this thing, you know, to something that can be launched. We're talking with everyone we can possibly talk to on LinkedIn. Um, you know, we're doing crazy mindset things where, um, you know, we're we're meeting up with each other and we're saying you can only talk business professionally for the next eight hours straight. Um, you know, we've done when the semester starts for school, most kids do a help or most kids do like, it's called like syllabus week at college, right? Where like you can go out like the class are super easy. Everyone goes out parties, not knocking that, but you know, in order to build a company, you know, like we're trying to build, we said, you know, we have to be a way different than we're going to forego our college experience, you know, to, to make this happen right now, you know, so, and we were totally willing to do it. Um, and, you know, I, I do remember he was the, the first one to really come up with that, that crazy mindset. And then he kind of put that mindset onto me. And then now it's just, we, we push each other. It's almost like, it's almost like a competition and like, where it's like, all right, who, who does more work? You know what I mean? And with constantly competing, like if you're going to hop on at, you know, after a long day at work, school and everything, and you're going to hop on a call at 1230 at night, you know, I'm going to get on and we're, we're both going to work, you know? Um, and we, and we do work on the company. It's an everyday thing at this point. It's, it's an everyday thing totally. Um, but back to the, the syllabus week thing, the start of each semester, we call it a hell week. And it's kind of like a, a nice reset in the matter of, you know, we wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning. The first thing you do in the day, you go on a three-mile run. And then the rest of the day for a whole week, we have everything mapped out to like a T. You know, there's no nap during the day. There's no, there's no going out. There's no, like, it's a straight grind mode thing. 
And because it's that first week of school, you know, most of the time helped or it's like working an actual job. But, um, and you know, that's that, that kind of gets us in the right mindset to say, all right, you know, we're going to have a semester long of school. The school gets, you know, gets in the way of things. So, you know, this is going to be a nice reset. This is, you know, we're walking in on a great foot going forward every semester um, when we do that. So that's just another one of those little mindset things that that we do just to, just to reset, to say, all right, like, let's, like we're going to attack this semester and then and then move forward with it. That's cool that you can play like uh, little games with yourself. It depends on how people work. Some people enjoy the game. Some people don't. They get frustrated, even with themselves. Like you said, you were going to do this. God damn it. I don't want to do it, though. And then they fight with themselves and they just run away. But that accountability is huge. So to have somebody else there to go, yo, we said we would do this thing. We said we'd be on a call. I can, I can tell some of the competitions there. Um, it's easy to be in competition with a friend and especially a partner as you guys are building something. The image in my head is almost like um, it's not as much competition as it is climbing up like an alley where you're you got two buildings that are five, six feet across and you have both of you back to back being able to walk up. If one of you tries to get up, you're not Spider-Man. You're not able to climb the wall. So to be able to have that other person there is huge. But I want to touch on what you had said quickly and then kind of like bounce away from it, that it's you and him. And it's the stuff that you guys are working through. You as a person need to be different than you were. And most people, when they go to college, especially the first couple of years, they typically major in the other sex and alcohol. And the fact that you're like, we need to calm down a little bit on that to be able to focus on this stuff. How are you actually working on yourself? What are you doing right now to, to manage that mindset and grow? Just like any other college student, when we both entered college, you know, we we're the same way. Um, you know, we used to go out all the time, you know, not saying, and I'm not knocking anyone who does do this, right? Uh, a good thing that, that someone once told me, a, a good friend of mine told me, you know, he, he had his own business. Um, he was actually washing windows at the time and like he like turned into a power washing company, like very successful. And he told me, he said, you know, we actually live together and he kind of looked at me, he goes, yeah, you know, once you're ready, dive in and take the step kind of out of this lifestyle. Like when you want to dive in on your business, because I would always say like, oh, you know, like I want to start a business. I want to do this. I want to do that. He's like, wait till you're ready to go in and actually take that step forward. Because if you half-ass it, there's no point. You might as well just keep messing around, you know, until you're actually serious where you want to dive head first and, you know, totally go for it. And so, you know, I always, ever since he told me that, I always kind of took that forward. And then when we finally did start the company, it was kind of like, all right, I'm going to dive in. I'm, we're going to go all in on this. Like, we're going to stop partying. We're going to cut the bullshit. We're not going to act like normal kids. You, you know what I mean? We're not going to act like, you know, like these hooligans almost, you know, like we're going to go hard with this company and we're not going to look back and we're going to attack it. And anything that gets in our way, we're going to run through that barrier and we're never going to give up no matter what. There were so many times when, you know, we could have given up and me and my partner swear to God, look at each other and we say, this would become a billion dollar company. And in the beginning, it was almost like we were just kind of saying that to each other. But now there's a true belief that both of us do believe that it will get there. And the only, the, literally the only thing that's stopping us is ourselves, right? That's literally the only thing that could ever get in the way of this becoming a billion dollar company it is something that we personally do ourselves which could be you know like getting a girlfriend that distracts you right we both had girlfriends at at a time and decided all right we have to, like we're cutting these out because they don't align with where we want to go with what what our dreams are right um another thing could be you know the partying the the going out all the bullshit you know you cut out that out you're going to have so much more time and it'll always be there too. Partying, 
girls going out, hanging out, will always be there for the rest of your life. It's not going anywhere. Um, you know, and one of my things is that I think of like, oh, like everyone's going out, you know. That's not something you think about. This is like t- the mindset part of it too. Like this is just like a way of thinking is, you know, no one's going to talk about that one specific time. Everyone out, went out a year from now. You know what I mean? Like there's so many opportunities for it to happen and, and there will be for the rest of your life. Um, so if that's one of the things, you know, for the viewers, if that's one of the things that is kind of like distracting you or you're wasting your time on, you know, cut it out you know, grind for a couple of years. And then when you come back to it, you know, you're not going to be partying in a basement or wherever you're going to be, you know, out at sea on a freaking yacht. You know, that's, that's the type of way we're, we're thinking over here with that. I think there's balance that needs to be had no matter what you do. You know, if you just lock yourself in a room and just keep working and working and working. Yeah, dude, honestly, that'll work for a bit and you can keep it going. But at some point, you're going to be driven mad. Like you've got to be able to have some sort of balance. I mean, shit, when you think about, we need to be able to actually sleep. Like you can't just work throughout the day and throughout the night. Maybe vampires, but you know, I don't really know any of those actual vampires. Some people just seem that way. But when you think of like, you have to take those little eight hour or six hour just jaunts away how are you balancing right now to understand like yeah i get it you're not going to go out you're not going to party you ditch the girl and like all of that's um that's appreciated for the journey but how are you actually managing balancing life where you have some you time where you go all right I seem to relax for a minute get my shit together and then i can get fired up and go back into it yeah for sure um one good way is you combine them so you know some downtime maybe you know you do go out right so i'll go out you know i like to do 13 days on one day off take every other saturday and go do something fun you know what i mean but i like to combine that with all right like we're gonna go out but i'm gonna go out with people who also own their own companies you know are entrepreneurial minded and what ends up happening is you know put all these people in a room you know even we're drinking we're out we're getting food um, maybe we're even out at a club, but you know, a lot of the talk is still centered towards business at the end of the day. And you're still, you're relaxing, like you're having a great time, like you're with your friends, but you're also learning at the same time. And you're, and you're saying, and it, it's not to the level that it is when you're, you know, sitting, it's different, right? It's a different perspective, but you know, a lot of the really high, high level successful people you know, we just kind of started doing this, but a lot of the really high level successful people say like they've combined like their work and their, you know, normal life. And it's just kind of merged into one because like, this is what I want to do. This is what I enjoy doing. You know, I enjoy talking about business. Um, and you know, all of our friends are the same way now, right? They're into business. They're into starting their own companies. You know, one of them's starting a solar company right now. He's out in California. So when we talk on the phone, Like I'm relaxing, like that's my time off, but you know, we're still talking about the business gets worked into it, you know? So we're kind of living this lifestyle where, you know, we're grinding our asses off, but then, you know, when we're not, we're hanging out, we're having a good time, obviously. Uh, But that business is still worked into it as well, which is pretty nice being able to have that kind of setup that we do where, where it's like that. Some people have, um, Uh, this fantasy about work-life balance and that has been a thing probably since the 50s or 60s when they wanted to be able to do work and then go home and have the nuclear family and all that stuff and i think what you hit on is a big thing that people are now starting to realize that no it's just a life balance you've got to be balanced within life and you got to do the thing that fucking matters to you if you don't the fuck are you doing And I know when I have those times where I need to just step away and I have conversations with friends, it's similar, where we'll get into things because that's the echelon of people that I choose to have around me. And it sounds like you're in that spot now where you're starting to choose those people. And that gets back to you where, you know, if you said it, you're like, I like to have these conversations, but I just go out and get fucking blackout drunk and whatever happens, happens you're not really able to have those conversations that you want to have. So it's interesting that you've hit on systems. 
where, you know, you have your 13, one, 13 days on one day I'll go off and I'll go do these different things. Uh, I think there's, there's something in there that some people don't realize. Are you familiar with habit stacking? Habit stacking. Well, it's kind of where, where you put yourself into a situation to do something that's habitual and then add in another habit. I'll give you an example. So every morning I meditate, I journal, and I do a handful of other things that are like part of my morning, my miracle morning in a sense. But every single day when I meditate, I know that I'm journaling next or I'm journaling first and then meditating because I've stacked those two together. And it sounds like you've kind of put yourself in that spot without even realizing it, which is great to be able to go, well, if I'm gonna do these things, I'm gonna do these other things as well. And I want to take a little bit of a step back because I don't think that's maybe consistently an innate trait. I think people have to get that from somewhere. So did you grow up in an entrepreneurial household? Do you have family members that are entrepreneurs? Like, where did the bug come from? Yeah, so I would say my mother, um, she didn't own her own business, but she was marketing. She was sales, like commission-based sales. So she was almost like her own boss, you know, like in order to get food on the table, she had to sell, you know, the product. And if she didn't sell the product, there wasn't food on the table. And she did very well at, at selling the product. Um, you know, there would even become points where she'd say, you know, her boss or the, the company owner, you know, would cut her below her commission rate because she was just earning so much, you know, off of it. And the number to him, like just seemed absurd that a sales person at the company could be making that you know so she would always be you know on the phone you know when i was little i'd always see her on the phone like taking these like business calls you know where i have to be quiet and then she talk and like it's almost like project managing the stuff to ensure that it gets out to the customer um because she'd sell stuff that the company couldn't even offer but she'd say they would and then she'd outsource it and do that whole thing as well. So she was almost acting as like product manager. It almost seemed like she was like running a company the way she was, you know, sending out orders to all these other people. And then I was, you know, I always just knew, like, if, even in kindergarten, like, you would write, What do you want to be when you're older? And I would write, A businessman. And like, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to own a business. And I didn't know what, I didn't know what it was going to be, but I wanted it to be big. I wanted it to be like, you know, that sort of like, dream that you have like you own your own company like it's a big company um and that was always my that was always my dream growing up yeah and it sounds like you um you learned that from your parents you know some people learn how to be shitty from their parents some people also learn um how to how to start a business or run a business uh the image in my head as you're talking about that is you just kind of witnessing your mom do what she was doing and you just absorbing that and through osmosis, I'm sure that's translated in some of your conversations, even resourcefulness to be like, huh, how do I figure this the fuck out? What do I need to do? You, you, you going to help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? You know, to be in that sort of spot, I think has to come from somebody that's been there. Uh, I grew up in an entrepreneurial household, uh, one half of the house, the other half, not the same house, but different house was an entrepreneurial. So I was able to see kind of the contrast between them. And being able to see that and have that almost initial balance can be key. So you and your partner right now are trying to figure out how to grow this thing. I want to take a little bit of a, a sidestep to where you're at right now and where your head's at and what you're going through and all. Are there any major moments or episodes that you've been through in life that you can look at and say, that was one of those times that changed me. That's actually been a benefit to where you're at now. It's hard to pinpoint exactly, you know, one instance where like we were at like a point where, you know, like things just like magically snapped you know, or like I can look back and be like, I learned like something at this specific moment because mm -hmm. with the company, I feel like, you know, every day is like a little learning experience and like none of it, ha like it's a slow moving, like none of it happens overnight. Like you don't just wake up and then, you know, have all these users using your product or you don't one day, you know, it come down to one decision where, you know, it's like, Oh, like that's what made this company. You know, it's like, there's so many small little facets that like we had to go through and like, we made mistakes. 
Like, heck, we made a lot of mistakes, um, you know, from, you know, I would say one of them, I mean, you look at, like, it's hard, though, because I look at these mistakes and I say, like, if we wouldn't have made, like, we had to make that mistake, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, we outsourced our company, you know, we paid tens of thousands of dollars to to get an app built when we probably shouldn't have did that, but, you know, who would have believed us to what developer would have would we have been able to convince that early on that we wouldn't have had to pay that we could have just paid them an equity? You know what I mean? Like we had to like those were just things that like we had to make mistakes on. We had to do those certain things, and then you come out of it and you learn. You know, so now I know you want your team fully in house. That's like rule number one. Um, and I'm not knocking the outsourcing agency that we that we used. Um, I'm just saying, you know, from a startup experience, you want to generally as much as you possibly can have everything done in house, um, just because you're able to oversee it way more. You're able to watch it way more. And again, that's that's what we learned by by outsourcing our our original product. Um, I could say. Probably one of the toughest things to do was just the whole mindset thing behind it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like becoming that different at the end of the day like i'm still the same guy that like i was before i started the company like deep down like same values like it's not like you drastically change you just kind of change your behaviors i'd say Mm -hmm. um so you know now i have a calendar with everything's written down throughout the day um you know there's there's more focus spent on what i'm doing um there's there's these little things that we do you know we do the hell week we you know do the 13 days on one day off because Mm -hmm. because we have to and because we enjoy it too you know there's the company wouldn't work if we didn't do that right and oh once it it, it is going to pay off that's that's another thing it's like it's like when a doctor starting a company is pretty much the same thing as like a doctor going to med school like do you think they're sitting in med school saying like oh my God, this is like so much fun. Like I love med school. Like, no, they're probably like, this is a lot of work. You know, like any logical person wouldn't do it if the end goal wasn't, you know, this great feeling of accomplishment, um, which is kind of what we're chasing is that just, you know, feeling of like, you know, wow, like I did, I had this crazy high goal and I went out there and I accomplished it. And mm-hmm. You know, you see so many people out there are like those type of people where they want to do that. Like, what's the point of climbing Mount Everest? You know what I mean? Like you get to, the, you put in all this hard work and you finally get to the top and it's like, oh my God, you know, like you get that really good feeling. And it's just like your brain producing like crazy amounts of dopamine, but you're like, wow, like this is like a really good experience. You can look back and you can say, you know, I worked super hard for a prolonged period of time to be able to, to accomplish this. And, you know, it it taught me this, this and that. And, you know, and you take all the positives away from it and learn from all the negatives. Um, You know, that's essentially kind of what we're doing. And, you know, you've definitely I feel like everyone's experienced this. But, you know, yourself with the podcast, you know, there was definitely hard work, you know, that had to be put in to, to get to where you're at right now to get people hitting you up and asking you to come on and to where you have a selective process now. So I bet, you know, in the the earlier days, it was probably, you know, a little bit easier to get on than it is nowadays where you have options, you have different routes that you're able to go and do. Well, partially, some of that even came back from, look, we're, we're different in age. I have started companies. The first company I started was right around how old you are. So I've learned so much since then to, by the time I've jumped into the podcast, this was another part of my business. I'm a coach outside of this, so this is an extension of the business. But I've learned a lot through the years and years to go, what do I really want to deal with? How much fucking aggravation do I want to deal with? What do I want this thing to be? And I think understanding like where you align and what this thing is about, even how we first connected. Uh, I told you I didn't mean to come off just like I'm deflecting, but there's a purpose to what we're doing. There's an aligned purpose to it. And I think when you're clear on that, you can then go, huh, what don't I want? What do I want? And how do I want to go about this? 
some of that still trial and error, even as you go, like you're learning, you know, like you try different things and you're like, that sucked, but we learned this. And if you didn't do that thing, something else would have sucked and you wouldn't have learned that. So you have to kind of go through that stuff to be able to understand and learn what you want, what you don't want. I think one of the biggest things that a lot of people have problems with is themselves. They look at all the shit outside. Like even when you're saying, I want to be able to get to the top of that mountain. I know people that have reached the top of the mountain and they've been fucking depressed because they're like, I did everything I could to get to the top of this mountain. Now I just want to jump off it. And there are other people that will hit different mountain tops and they go, all right, well, this is great. Now I can help others or I can do other things, but you've got to experience that as you go. And that's why I've touched on balance a couple of times, because I think it really boils down to you. You know, like if you're in that spot where you're like, I want to do all this, I want to get after this thing. And you can get into a flow state where next thing you know, it's 1230 at night and you're on a call with somebody and you're still rocking and rolling. It's a beautiful thing. But when you're grinding yourself to the bone, then you're just literally working the machine into the ground without maintaining it and making sure that it's oiled and good to go. Because there are certain times you need to get oiled. Go have a couple drinks. I'm not promoting alcohol, but you know what I mean? Like, go out and let loose. Be free. Sometimes you got to deal with some of that shit. And honestly, man, I actually really appreciate being able to get in a conversation with people. I call them beer conversations. Because if I can get into a conversation with somebody, we're having drinks and they go, look, if you can help me with this, I'm in. That shit's not going to come from a normal like boardroom meeting or some Zoom call where we're trying to discover all the shit that you're trying to figure out. There's depth to that and being able to open up and show some of that underbelly. So showing some of your underbelly here, you've been doing this for a couple years now. Think about somebody who's just about to start, maybe a buddy or two friends that are sitting there going, you know, we like hockey and we like lacrosse. What do we do? What sort of advice would you give them, not specifically business, but for their minds, for their mindsets? I would say, you know, literally just attack it with every resource you possibly have. Nothing's off the table. Go use every resource that you have at your disposal. Be as hungry and untamed as possible. Like you'll learn how to like tame the beast and kind of like rail it in and you know become like focused on like a really like straight line. But like in the beginning, just like just go after it, you know, think as hard as you possibly can. You just do everything at 190%. You know, in the especially in the beginning. You know, that's not sustainable. To, to do that for forever, like you said, like you're going to bury yourself right into the ground. Like, you know, it's just not realistic. But in the beginning, especially, you got like just attack it hard and then get that early momentum so that you're able to, you know, keep going. Because, you know, when you're starting out, you're on your own. You know what I mean? It's not like, it's not like you're going to work for someone and like you show up and like they're really like, holding you through the whole process. Like, no, you're on your own now. You know? And if, if, if this doesn't work, you know, you're probably, you're going to have wasted a lot of time, possibly a lot of money, whatever. You'll have a good learning experience behind that for sure. No matter what happens, you're going to learn a lot. But um, you obviously want more than that just to learn. You, Everyone wants to create something successful. So I would say in the beginning, you know, just literally attack it as hard as you possibly can. Um, don't give up. And those are really, and think really hard about, you know, everything that's going on. Like put focus units towards it is what I like to say. You can spend a lot of time at something, but like if your focus units aren't there, you know, what should have taken four hours could take you eight hours. Right. Um, And, and yeah, that really my main, main thing to anyone who's, who's starting out. And then as you go along, like I said, you know, you tame it in. Um, you maintain the balance. Um, you know, another thing that I never talked about that has helped me a lot is, you know, I've always loved to work out. You know, I mean, if I'm working out every day, like I can, I can keep, I don't know, I'm not getting bored of working on help. I can just keep going. And then, you know, you take those nights off, go have a great time. Every time I go out now, I have an absolute blast. You know what I mean? I'm not sitting there like, oh, like, you know, this sucks. Like, when I go out, 
you know, it's a gr- good group of guys that we're going with, good group of girls. Um, and, you know, we're going out, we're having a great time. And, you know, th- that's really what it's all about, you know? Yeah, man. I had, uh, I had a guest on recently that said a shortened version of what you were talking about. And I think this might be something you might be able to take along with you, but fail fast. Being able to fail fast and just quickly, just fuck up. Just keep fucking up. Just fuck up, figure it out. But if you don't mess it up and you don't do anything about it, then you won't ever get past that. Where even in those uh, focus units of being able to say, all right, I'm going to block out time to be able to do these things and kind of burn the, the boats in a sense to make sure that you have to sit there and kind of do that stuff. You're able to fail over and over and over and work through that. And especially if you've got somebody else you're working with. So you got a, a cool little recipe going where you have accountability with your partner. You guys are fired up and you're working through stuff. But the fact that you understand that your mindset is a crucial portion of this is something that I think a lot of people that are in their 20s or even people that are just starting a brand new business, that don't matter if you're in your 60s or 70s. If you've worked for somebody else forever, you start your own company, there's shit you're going to learn. You just wouldn't have known going into it. And I know there are certain people that are the thinkers of the world. Where they think about all these things. You know, let me just think about it. And let me just brainstorm it. And then put it down on paper. Then there are other people that are like, fuck that, fuck your paper, move. And they're moving along. I think there's a bit of a balance to it. So it's great to hear that you're, you're working through what that balance looks like. Because it looks different for everybody else. Um, and man, I appreciate you being on. I appreciate you being open and honest. And talking through this stuff, I'm excited to hear how the company continues to grow. Keep me in a loop. It would be awesome to hear uh, that at some point you are a billion dollar company. And I, of course, want to know how the summer goes. But I also got to hear in a couple of weeks what, uh, what happens with your leg there. So uh, as we wrap things up, where can people find you? Where, where can they connect with you? Uh, yeah. So, you know, professionally, obviously LinkedIn. Um, that's where, you know, we're posting all of our company updates, uh, new hires, everything of that sort. Um, you know, so I think if you just search my name, Matthew Kavanaugh, it'll come up on there. My LinkedIn, uh, my Instagram, Matt Cav 84. Um, that's more like personal, but you know, give me a follow on there as well. Incorporate the company into that as well. And, um, and yeah, you know. I'll be around more and more, you know, I want to get into, I want to get into all social medias heavy eventually. Um, But, you know, I think first in order for you to really grow on those, you gotta, you gotta do something. So I'm making this app successful and then I want to be present more on social media, but LinkedIn and Instagram, give me a follow. Uh, LinkedIn's just my name, Instagram, MattCav84. And yeah, God bless. Thank you very much, Nick, for having me on. Really appreciate it. And um, yeah, God bless. Stay good. Been a pleasure, man. Thank you. Another great conversation on today's episode of the Mindset and Self Mastery Show. I know some listeners have started companies while in college, while I'm sure there are others who just thought, man, that would have been such a mess. But I'm sure we can all take note that being overall positive and believing in yourself and your mission is sometimes all you need to build an empire. So what did you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts on the conversation today. And if you enjoyed the episode, please jump over to iTunes and subscribe, rate, and leave a five-star review. And if you really enjoyed the show, please go ahead and share it with your friends and family. And check out the show notes for more info, contact info for Matt. And check out other episodes on the mindset and self mastery show.com, as well as our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search the mindset and self mastery show. And thank you again, Matt, for being on the show, for being honest, raw, and real with us. And thank you to you for joining us today. Remember, your mindset matters, and so do you. Thank you.